How are we doing everyone? This is part five of the Rooted Access campus design. If you look down, <coughs> excuse me, in the description there should be a link to the previous packet tracer file where we just configured OSPF in the core and then the distribution layer as well as up here at the WAN and the internet. The two internet facing routers have got default static routes configured pointing towards the internet um, out of their fiber channels. So what we've done is configure default information to originate on both of these routers to propagate that default route on both routers down towards the network. So if we grab a router here, for example, and do a show IP route, we should see those default routes at the bottom. There we go. So that's then there, the external routes. That's what we want. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is First off, what I noticed is, is that in the last video, I just quickly threw this all in, in area zero. <clears throat> now, I don't want to do that because I want to be able to summarize to the core and you can't do that with area zero. So what I need to do is I'm going to go in, take OSPF off that again, reapply it and put the VLAN interfaces into area, we'll call it area 30 to keep the format the same and the interconnect between the distribution switches will also go into area 30. After we do that, we're going to slide along here and configure area 10 and area 20 to be totally stubby areas which uh, shall suppress the type 3, 4 and 5 LSAs so that we only have um, our internal OSPF uh, routes. So that would be here will be the point to point OSPF area 10 routes. Everything else should be replaced with uh, default routes pointing up to the distribution switches, so we'll get ECMP default routes going up here. And that should be that. So what I will say though, is that when you're configuring totally stubby areas and stubby areas and not so stubby areas and totally not so stubby areas in Packet Tracer, it can be an absolute nightmare. Things just don't work sometimes. You get random default routes pointing the wrong way. You get um, routes coming through which should be filtered and suppressed. Sometimes what you can do is save the file, reopen it, and that can sometimes fix some of the problems. But fair warning here, we may have to be a little bit flexible. If you're following along on GNS3, you won't need to worry about this. This will work like that, no problem. If you're doing it in Packet Tracer like me, then these issues might creep up, so we might need to be a little bit flexible. So fair warning. So the plan is, we're going to change this to area 30 on the LAN face and interface and the interconnect. These two will still be area zero, which connect to the core. Then we're going to do a totally stubby area, totally stubby area. We're going to put some NAT on these two routers here so we can reach the internet, do a little bit of ping testing. And then lastly, we're going to see if we can get um, that DHCP address on the server here because we now have OSPF up and running so we can relay that IP helper address. So that should be up and working. I think that'll pretty much be the end of the video. You can do a lot more stuff. You can put access configurations, port security, storm control. You can put quality of service on. We could have added IP phones and wireless and lots of other things. But this is just a general overview of a rooted access design to give you a basic feel of how you IP address it and some of the basic rules. Like I say, packet tracer is a nightmare with stub areas and totally stubby areas. You also can't do things like mitigate Ceph polarization by changing hash values. So this is, view this as an introduction to this kind of topology. If you want to see more, then Google a Cisco validated design document and you'll get so much more uh, than what I'm presenting in this video here. So with that, let's kick on and do it then. So the first thing we're going to do is remove that OSPF process ID of one on both of these routers just now. So we'll do configure terminal, no router OSPF1, just remove that. And same again here, and we'll just do oh, no. Oh, I'm not going to configure terminal. No router OSPF one. Now what I'll do is fast forward that just to keep things up because packet tracer tends to be a bit dodgy. Okay, so now let's do router OSPF one, and we'll do do show IP route connected, and we're still putting these two interfaces. And area zero that's the core but the rest the vlans and the look back we're going to do area 30 so let's do that now we'll do network 0, 0, 20 and that's three and that's going to be area zero flip up here change that to a 60 and that's our area zero is done the next one is 10 30 100.0 and this is going to be an area 30 change that to 200 and the last one is going to be the look back so it's going to be 254.1 
and area 30. So that should be that. Let's move over here and do the same thing. We'll do, oh, do show IP root connected and we'll do router OSPF1 and we'll do network and we'll put this in area 0, change that to 64, that's area 0 too and the rest go into area 30. Area 30, change that to 200 and And the last one is going to be 10.30.254.2 and area 30. So that should be that up and running. So now we're going to go over here and configure our, um, our basic uh, OSPS. What we're going to do is just put all the area, or so rather all the networks in area 10 down here. So router OSPF1 network, we'll put all the networks area 10, same again here, router OSPF oh, 1 net, area 10, and we'll do router OSPF 1 net, oh forgot to put the area 10 on, Let's move over to area 20 now, do the same thing, and we're going to do uh, router OSPF1 net in area 20 this time. I'm going to do enable, up, oh, enable. Ritter OSPF1 net area 20 and we'll do enable Ritter OSPF1 net area 20. Okay, so that's that done. So now we should see the adjacencies form between the access layer and the distribution layer. So let's have a check. So that seems to be fine. And if we do a show IP route, we'll see all these inter area routes. We don't want these. We're going to get rid of these by configuring a totally stubby area. And the way to do that is to go to the area border routers, the ABR, which happens to be the distribution layer. And we're going to configure on this one and this one, area 10 stub no summary. You need the no summary to specify that it's a totally stubby area. However, down at the access layer, we just need to set the stub flag. So area 10 stub no summary, area 10 stub no summary, and at the access, just area 10 stub, area 10 stub, area 10 stub. Over here, the same process, but with area 20. Area 20 stub no summary, area 20 stub no summary, area 20 stub, area 20 stub, area 20 stub, and that should be that. Like I say, prepare for some problems with packet tracer, because this always happens, so we'll try and work around it if we need be. So if you're following along on GNS3 or EVNG, you'll have no such issue. So let's go and we'll do router OSPF1 and we'll do area 10 stub no summary and we should lose our adjacencies. And same again here. Root, oh, configure terminal router OSPF1 area 10 stub no summary. And let's move down to the access layer. And we'll do area 10 stub. And we'll do router OSPF1 area 10 stub. Configure terminal. And we'll do router OSPF1 area 10 stub. So they should all resync. And let's go over here up to the ABRs again and do the same thing but for area 20. Router OSPF1 area 20 stub no summary. And we'll do router OSPF1 area 20 stub no summary. There's also other configurations you could be putting on this which I'm not including like authentication. 
if you fancy doing that yourself then by all means go ahead there's nothing stopping you it's actually a better practice to be doing so but for the purpose of this video we're just going to keep it simple uh, so let's go here do router os pf1 area 20 stub and the last one is router os pf1 area 20 stub so if we go back over to the access layer here we should have a resync now effectively what should happen we should only see all routes the internal ospf and then our e2 default route but like i say we're actually getting all our inter areas there you see that still so this is just typical packet are not working correctly we'll try and work around it by saving the file and um, just call it saved and what we'll do is we'll close it and try to reopen it right let's reopen you mm -hmm. right okay open up the saved one do a little bit of fast forwarding okay now let's go back into the same switch hopefully those inter areas will be away don't have anything there now that's a bit weird let's go to the next one Give that some time to speed up. The roots really should be in already, but like I say, there we go. So that's more what we want. We want to see just the O roots and the default route. So that's what we're after. And let's see if this is actually up yet. Yeah, okay. So now we've got rid of all those IAs and it's just been replaced with the default route. That's what we want. We're going to have ECMP out fast Ethernet 1 and 2 which is here and here pointing up to the distribution layer so that's what we're after let's check that area 20 is the same like i said i don't know why a packet reserve does this stuff but it's just it's it's strange okay that looks a bit better um now another thing which often happens is you get issues with um multiple default routes when you do stuff like this in packet reserve for some reason Especially when you're starting doing like default information to originate. Well, that seems fine there. Show IP root. That's fine there. This might be a bit of an issue here, mind you. See, that's the problem there. This has got four ones. You see that? That's actually got a default route pointing towards, where was, what's that going? One, two, four, and five, so that's where. Okay, four and five, that's where we want, they're fine. And what, see, it's, this is packet traces have been weird again. This has actually got default routes pointing here, here, and back into the core. Now, area 66 is not a, it's not a stub or a totally stubby area and there should be no reason for an injection of a default route that should just see the core fine and i don't know why this does this this is just packet traces have been bizarre i fully tested this topology before i did it in gns3 because stuff like this happens and it was absolutely fine so show ip route see if that's still there see that is weird we're now getting default routes pointing back in so what happens if we're going to Effectively what's going to happen is if we try to ping it out to the internet, we're going to start losing packets because default is going to start pointing them down to here and whatnot because it's not going to know the route. It's not going to know where 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 is. It's just going to send it to its defaults. So we um, try to think how to fix this in this case. Like I say, if you're on GNS3, just leave this. area 66 will be fine, but I think for the purposes of this, it might be worth just popping this into area 0 to try to remedy that. Because uh, this could be a bit of Let's see if this one's the same. Let's get the same as well. See, that's what I'm saying. It injects random default routes. You could understand maybe if this was a totally stubby area or something and it thought, okay, well, we're going to summarise into here and we've got a default here. There's no such thing. This is just an area 66 and area 0 connected to one another. 
via an ABR. There should be no default routes there. So I think to get around this, we'll just remove, which is a bit annoying, but we'll, we'll do no router OSPF one. This is unfortunately the price you pay for having to lab OSPF and packet racer, but nevertheless, we'll just do that. And we'll change these to area zero. No router OSPF one. Oh. And we'll do no router OSPF one. Okay, so I will just fast forward that and I'll just throw all these into I'll just put all the networks in area zero in this one to hopefully get rid of that. And Ritter OSPF one network. Right, okay. And we'll put the LAN face and interfaces into you. Into area zero as well. So do show IP root connected. And what we're gonna do is do network ten sixty six one dot zero. And that's going to go area zero and two as well it's going to go area zero and we're going to do our default information originate again we'll need to reapply that okay so let's do show ip root connected and we'll do router ospf one and we'll do network 10.66.3.0 and we'll make that area zero, change that to a four, and we'll do default information originate. Speed that up a little bit and hopefully that should have resolved that stupid issue, which is a bit silly. So we'll do a show IP root. Okay, that's a bit better. We've got the, just got the two default routes pointing out towards the internet. That's a lot better. So what I'll do is, um, I think what I'll do is I'll save this video here and we'll move on to summarization and the next one and do the that and the next one because if that little bit of a uh, troubleshooting we had to do there, I don't want the video to go on for too long. So if we just hang tight here, I'll save the video and I'll upload this packet tracer for the next file and the next one. Okay, so hang tight and I'll see you in two minutes.